morning, everyone, and welcome to worship today. I just want to say thank you again for meeting me in this online space for worship. Um, we had one big storm this last week, and um, I am glad that it has moved through and things are getting better. But unfortunately, we still have some leftover effects. So that is why we are meeting here online in this um, space right now, because there was just a little too much ice um, that was found under the snow after it was cleared away. So we did not want to risk any slips, any falls, any possible broken bones. So I just want to say thank you for your your flexibility and for adapting um, to deal with, with this and with Mother Nature. So to start us off today um, with some announcements, we've got for Cisna Park, our Bible study meets every Wednesday, weather pending, of course, at 630 in the basement. And then we also have the prayer group that meets every Thursday morning at nine in the basement as well. And then an additional announcement I brought up in church last week. There is a grief share support group that is going to be starting up at the Milford Christian Church. And that's at 811 East Hickory Street in Milford. It begins this week, February 9th at 7 p.m. And it will meet every Wednesday for the program runs about 13 weeks. So if you are interested in that or if you have someone you'd like to pass that information to, everyone is welcome. And anyone can start at any time. You do not have to attend all meetings. You know, if you were to miss the first two, let's say you can come in on week three and that'll that'll be fine. And then Rankin announcements today, in addition to the grief share information, there's going to be a card shower for Harold Ingold's 99th birthday. He will be 99 on February 11th, so that's coming up very soon. He is at Autumn Fields, 325 Orange, Hoopston, Illinois, 60942. So if you'd like to send him a card, that would be wonderful to celebrate his 99th birthday. And then there is going to be a bake sale on February 12th in the Fellowship Hall from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. That is next Saturday. And it is um, a youth fundraiser to go to camp. So um, they're going to be making a lot of great treats. So just letting you know that that will be taking place. Oh, Lord, our God. You are worthy of all our praise. You are the God who never fails to keep his promises. We thank you that in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we see your love, justice, mercy, provision, and victory. You are the God who lifts up those who are weighed down. You are the God who provides for your children. Our desire is to praise you as long as we live. Amen. I do invite you to join me in praying for some joys and concerns that we have had. So I'm going to have some from Cisna Park and Rankin as well. So to begin, uh, there was a prayer request for Elizabeth Kinder. She is Debbie Savone's niece, I believe. Um, she has tested positive for COVID. And um, along with her, um, prayers also for her dad, who is also COVID positive, and her two sons, Devin and Madden. So if we could please keep them in our prayers um, that they're able to get through the COVID and recover quickly. And then also I would like to lift up Dorothy Byheisen. Um, she fell a couple of days ago and broke her hip. Um, so she will be undergoing surgery tomorrow. So if we could please keep Dorothy in our prayers as well as she will be um, dealing with this surgery and recovery. I'd also like to lift up um, Betty Steiner and the Steiner family at this time for prayers of comfort and strength. And then um, also like to lift up the with the big storm that we had this week, all of those men and women who worked tirelessly to clear the roads, um, the first responders who went out um, if they needed to pull people from a ditch, um, you know, medical first responders as well, the police, ambulances, firefighters would like to lift them up as well. Um, and if there are any other um, joys and concerns at this time, 
time. I know we're in the virtual space, but know that we are praying for those as well. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, we thank you for this ability to meet together in this online space. Lord, we still want to lift up our joys and concerns to you. Lord, please be with the following people at this time who are dealing with various health challenges. Please be with Elizabeth, her dad, and her two sons as they are dealing with COVID. Please be with Dorothy as she's um, dealing with a broken hip and upcoming surgery at this time. The Steiner family as well, Lord. Um, we just ask that you pour down your peace and your love and your grace on them today and every day. Please be with them to help meet their needs. And please be with um, their medical teams who are working to care for them so well. We're grateful for this, Lord, and we thank you for this. And Lord, for all of those, um, the first responders, all of those teams that worked so tirelessly through this storm that we had, we know, Lord, that Mother Nature is very strong and we are just grateful for them. Um, so we just lift them up. We hope that um, they are now resting because um, it was it was a long two days. So we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for them. And thank you for your provision during this time. And if there are any other prayer requests, concerns, challenges, joys that we are unaware of, Lord, we want to pray over these as well and lift them up to you. Lord, we are so grateful that you know everything that is happening in everyone's lives. So we just lift these things to you today and we thank you. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In scripture that we're going to be focusing on today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray as we begin today's message. Almighty and powerful Lord, we thank you for this day to gather together and worship you. Please help remind us to always focus on you first, keeping Jesus as our guide as we navigate this game of life. We thank you for this opportunity to do your work in this world and ask that you continue to guide us as we take this journey. 
Please open our hearts and minds to receive your message you have for us today. And please bless the reading, teaching, and preaching of this message and all who hear it. I pray this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome back, and thank you for joining me as we are in our fifth and final week talking about the game of life. Here is the fifth and final commercial of this series that I wanted to share with you today. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this series these last five weeks as we've gleaned some real world truths from this popular and fun family game. Now I'm going to do one final reminder of what we've learned. In week one, we talked about how God's version of success is measured by the love and forgiveness we find in Jesus Christ, not worldly items. Secondly, we learned that I am sorry and please forgive me are some of the most important words and feelings we can express when traveling through life. It's about being relational and connected to one another. Next, we talked about how we can survive life's storms and setbacks by turning to God first when we have worries, concerns, and obstacles in our way. This will make way for God's peace to come into our lives and to change us. Last week's truth we talked about was finding contentment in today's world and how that comes through a personal relationship with Jesus. Finally, today we will explore what it means to live a full life through Jesus as we walk through this actual game of life. Now, as we've journeyed through this series, every week we received a new truth from the game of life. And each and every truth I've mentioned along the way all point back to Jesus. He is the way that we win at the actual game of life while we are here on this planet. It's so easy to get sidetracked as we go through life by things, stuff, people, and more. And these distractions are ways that the enemy can take and twist and use to make sure we don't live our lives fully. It's much easier to fall prey to this when we don't have Jesus as our guide. Now, in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, The thief, referring to Satan, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I want us all to keep this in mind. Jesus is life-giving. The life he gives right now is abundantly richer and fuller. It's eternal, and it begins right now. Living life for Christ and accepting this gift is a call to live differently because of his overflowing forgiveness, love, mercy, guidance. The question is, Have we taken hold of Christ's offer to live fully? Have we realized success through him? Have we used six little words to strengthen our relationships? Have we turned to Jesus first when life gets hard and unsure? And do we seek contentment through him and not worldly desires? Now, I did some crowdsourcing on Facebook to see what people thought about living a full and fruitful life and what it meant to them. And I was so happy to see a variety of answers from people who had very distinct backgrounds and opinions. Some of the ways they suggested were the following. And these were quotes that I took off of the Facebook. Some people said, enjoying blessings money can't buy. Belief in God and living and acting on his word. Ending each day in peace, finding comfort, and that a new tomorrow is beginning. 
setting goals and having dreams, sharing love by giving to others without expectations in return, being genuinely you and making each day count, investing in relationships, not things, and putting God first above everything else. Living each day the best you can and harming no one in the process. Being kind, being genuine, being the one to smile at everybody you meet. It could be just what they need. Allowing God to guide you, walking in obedience to God no matter how hard it is. The fullness comes from the peace you receive regardless. Regardless. The fruit in your life is the peace and love others see through you directing them to Christ. And Jesus is the only solution that truly fulfills. Never giving up, never losing faith, never walking away from God. Our prayers are heard and God is working. Thank you to everyone who contributed their thoughts to that. Now in our scripture today, <clears throat> we heard the Ten Commandments, and these commandments were given to us as a way to live a full life with God. Now, some may take them as a list of do's and don'ts and can interpret them in a restrictive way. But these commandments were given to Moses to share with the Israelites and with us as to how to live a life of practical holiness. Through these commandments, we can see the nature of God and his plan for how we should live. Their intention is to direct us, the community, to meet the needs of each individual in a loving and responsible manner. But by Jesus's time, and even now, humans have a tendency to look at these commandments in the wrong way. For example, the Ten Commandments, they can, you know, this is one way to interpret it. The Ten Commandments are just a list of things we can't do. Or humans at times have this thought that we must meet every law and obey them in order to earn God's protection and his love. Law keeping became an end in itself, not the means to fulfill God's ultimate law of love. But we don't have to earn God's love. We already have it if we want it. So for me, things need to be made simple. I grasp ideas and concepts better when they're explained and broken down for me to understand. Now, what is so neat about these Ten Commandments is how they align. The first four commandments align vertically with God and speak on how our relationship with the Lord can look. Those are, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God and remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. These are the commandments we are to keep in our relationship with him. Now, the next six commandments are to help us align horizontally with others. Honor thy father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony and you shall not covet. These are to help us in relationship with others around us, how we are to function in the body of Christ. These commandments will help us have life to the full as Jesus. Said. God's original plan for us was to live with him fully forever in paradise, but sin and death entered into the garden and everything changed. If in Deuteronomy 6 verses 1 through 2, we hear Moses speaking to the Israelites, explaining these commandments and their function. He says, now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you 
so that your days may be long. Moses is right. These commandments help us to get right with God and with people. But in order to do so, in order to live so fully in and with the Lord, it will take surrender. Surrender means to hand over control to someone or something else. And this is difficult. Surrendering to God means letting go of our perception of control of our body, spirit, soul, life, past, present, and future, and trusting him. As we walk through life, we have to make conscious decisions as to how to live our lives. Will we try to retain all control over everything? Will we hang on to that last little bit that we just don't want to give up? Or will we surrender the control to God by allowing him to be Lord of our lives? We must hand over complete control of our lives so he can work fully in and through us. We must admit that he's our Lord and Savior. And then as the cliche goes, Jesus take the wheel. If we allow Jesus to lead and direct us, if we make this choice and commitment to him, if we tell him that we need and love him, he will bless us in so many different ways. After we surrender and allow Jesus to be Lord of our lives, we are to obey his law. We have the Ten Commandments. We have the book of Leviticus, which explains how to live out those commandments. But I think Jesus explained it best and captured the essence of it all in Matthew twenty-two thirty-six 36 through 40. It says, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus is amazing. He was able to encapsulate everything into these two great commandments, thus helping us to align vertically by loving God and then horizontally by loving people. If we love God and love people, we can live the full life he intended for us to have. And there's a popular song on Christian radio, ironically titled, Love God and Love People, and it's by Danny Gokey. Now, here are a few lyrics I want to share with you, and don't worry, I won't be singing. The song goes, I've been running in circles, jumping the hurdles, getting caught in that rush of doing so much. I'm feeling kind of worn out. All this checking the boxes, trying to be flawless, has me spinning my head, catching my breath, too afraid to slow down. I tell myself to keep this up, that God wants more than just my love, but I've been complicating things. It's just like me to overthink. Got to keep it real simple. Keep it real simple. Bring everything back right to ground zero because it all comes down to this. Love God and love people. We're living in a world that keeps breaking, but if we want to find the way to change it, it all comes down to this. Love God and love people. Now, there is a lot more to the song, but the artist drives the point home. These last few weeks, we've been talking about these truths in the game of life that can fall into these two commandments from Jesus as well. Love God and love people. So as we move forward in this week ahead, I want to challenge us all to take a look at our relationship with the Lord. Think about if you've surrendered your life fully to the Lord. If you have, how can you draw closer to him still? If you haven't, ask him to help and guide you. Ask him to help you love him more and ask him to show you how you can love people even better 
than you already do. And then may we all have life and have it to the full. Let's pray. Merciful and loving Lord, thank you for the way you love us. Thank you for the many blessings you bestow in our lives. And thank you for being the focus of how we can live life fully. We know that you are love. You have endless love for your children. Please help us to love you better and to love all your children better. Thank you, Lord, for your never-ending grace and mercy. I pray all this in Jesus' holy and glorious name. Amen. Well, thank you all. I pray that you have a wonderful, safe, and blessed weekend.